I'm, I'm very comfortable with me, and yeah. I'm comfortable with you too. By the way, this is when I'm in a good mood. This is when I'm in a bad mood. Just so you know. Good mood, bad mood. Now I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time though. So. <laughs> good afternoon, evening, morning, potentially night, depending on when you're watching this. I am Jeremy Hecht. This is the best interview ever, and today we have a very special guest. All the way from Canada, fellow Canadian brethren. He is an absolute legend in the streets. He has interviewed small names such as LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Mike Tyson, Kendrick Lamar. Hey, Kobe. Cabby, man. But he's here with me today. Uh, Cabby, how are you doing, sir? I'm excellent. Thank you. That's a wonderful intro. I appreciate that. Great name for a show, by the way. I love that. Speaking of best, I did some digging. You said the best Super Bowl ever was 43, Steelers versus the Cardinals. From the gun, Steelers show blitz. Here they come. He gets it away and it's picked off at the goal line. I wanted to know what's the best sports moment that you've seen live. Oh, wow. Wow, that's a great question. When the Lakers beat the Celtics in game seven in 2010. <laughs> I was at the Staples Center, and because I'm such a Kobe stan, it was like a huge deal for me. And then early in my prop giving days, I brought him like this little Oscar, this like little plastic Oscar that we found at, I don't know, some store in Los Angeles. I was like, hey, listen, I know you're getting the Larry O'Brien trophy tonight. You got another M NBA Finals MVP, but here's my award to you. Well, I was actually going to ask you, because I know you presented him with the Oscar. So do you get any royalties now after he actually no. won one? <laughs> I mean, as basketball players, we're really supposed to shut up and dribble, but... No, no, it just makes me look like I'm, like I'm some kind of... Uh, Profit? Like some kind of, yeah, some kind of prophet. <laughs> I live by the creed, fake it till you make it. I've been faking it for a long time. Well, you and Kobe actually, you ended up building this hilarious relationship. It's building relationships over time. I'm glad you said that because yeah. we have been building our relationship over time. Mm -hmm. Kobe, would you agree? I agree completely. Right. That was so cool to watch play out on TV. Um, what kind of rugs does Kobe have in his house? <laughs> <laughs> The kind that I take my sneakers off before I go mm. home. You know, we're Canadians. That's just something that we do that's in our culture. First of all, I think that's a weird thing that they don't take their shoes off here. Like, you're getting right. your, your floor dirty. How about, have people been asking you about me? Every hey, once in a while. They do? Oh, uh, you know what? They asked me for a cab. Oh. Not cabby. Speaking of goats, you also gave Michael Jordan uh, a six to eight second embrace. I, I like to call it an embrace. Um, what did his deltoids feel like? Great question. I was just feeling his heartbeat. So I like, even though my, my hands were like pressed up against his back, it was like my face was like right on his chest. And also, and also I'm just one of these. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you. Make sure you explain to everybody that doesn't mean anything more than what it No, was. no, we're just. I was also really aware of like, at some point someone's gonna hit me with something to pry me off of Michael Jordan's body. Thankfully that didn't come, but I was just so caught up in the moment mm -hmm. of just holding one of the greatest athletes of in human history that I just focused on nothing else. There's not many people in the history who have been able to contain Michael, but you did it for six to eight seconds, so that's, <laughs> that's a win in itself. Yeah, the Detroit Pistons had other ways of guarding, of containing Michael Jordan, which was being very physical. I had to mm -hmm. introduce my own level of physicality no. through love. And being a very weird man. Hey, being weird takes you far sometimes, uh, in, including very close into the personal space of many of the best athletes in the world. I'm wondering who has the worst breath that you've been oh, in close man. contact with? You know, I've, I've spoken to some athletes right after competition and just their whole body, just it's just very powerfully rich in its disgustingness not a word but you know yeah, yeah it, i feel it you know it was probably my own oh you know it was my own and i'll tell you what <laughs> i did an interview with kyle lowry and demar DeRozan here in toronto a couple of years ago and i had a burrito just before i started and then kyle lowry called me out on it. he's like yo wrestling like guy stroke juice <laughs> Also, okay, let's let's take it back for a second because you've had all these incredible moments, but I know that when you first started, it was just an idea. You were an intern. You pitched this idea of going out on the yeah. street. Um, and when you did your first ever cabbie on the street segment, do you know what street cabbie was on? <laughs> <laughs> 
Excellent. Uh, so this is this is going to be too specific. This is going to be too inside baseball for people who watch your watch your segment. The part of this particular first episode that people remembered, whoever saw it, you know, 17, 18 years ago, was I got a bunch of people to sing the Canadian national anthem, and I was on Queen Street West, and I was singing to a baby in a carriage, and as I was singing, the baby started to cry. So that was the moment where, like, my boss was like, okay, this is funny. We can put this on TV. But it was Queen Street West. It's not too insider because Drake mentions uh, streets all the time. Like, he, he's mentioned Eglinton Street, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, Western Road. Western, Western Road, Road flows. flows. But uh, that, so when you brought that idea to your boss, like, were you nervous? Was it a spark, like, gut thing? How did that go down? I was nervous because the, our boss at the time was kind of a gangster. We were in fear. Super nice guy, but, like, at that time... Being a lowly intern, just like I was 22 and I just, you know, I just didn't want to get fired. Even though we were working for free, it was just my dream to like start to work at a sports channel. So once I, I showed him like the, the first version, he's like, ah, oh, this is okay, do another one. The second episode was the one that he saw that he liked and then he gave me the green light to put it on. Who was your first interview with like a celebrity or athlete that you were really like thrown into or that you were kind of nervous about? Uh, I guess Vince Carter. And I, I, I think we were like hugging each other. It was like, it was the beginning of me just hugging <laughs> a lot of grown men. I remember we were growing up, we'd never seen anything like that. Like, first of all, you were getting to talk to all these celebrities that like we were seeing on the TV. You wear many hats, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a singer. Yes. You are uh, an MC. You are an actor. Mm -hmm. You are the global ambassador uh, for the Toronto Raptors. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you own a record label. Yes. Are you allergic to being bored, Drake? <laughs> you were like a guy who was asking them stuff that we would want to know. Um, did you realize the impact you had or was it not until after when you got to look back on things? Uh, no, I, in the moment, you, I, just, I just was thinking about like, okay, I got to edit this tonight. I got to get this on the air. I was just stressed out about what's the next thing I'm going to do. I didn't really get a sense of how many people it resonated with. Like, like yourself and your homies in Winnipeg. Winnipeg, by the way, <laughs> very underrated city in Canada. There are some beautiful people in Winnipeg. Like, it's, it takes a trek to get there, and it's not really a place where a lot of people want to go, but the people that are from there, I salute you. Good people in the 204. You heard it here from, uh, from Cabby. <laughs> well, and also to give you some, um, some context onto how much of an impact you've made, you actually are on famousbirthdays.com, which is, to me, uh, an accomplishment, because that means if you search up someone's name, it's like all the celebrities compiled onto this fact base where it just has their birthday, their sign, and like a couple facts. Um, you are currently the 84,096th most popular celebrity <laughs> in the world, but you are the ninth most popular Gemini broadcaster, only behind number one, Dick Vital. So if you ever want context. <laughs> Thank you. That was, that was a wonderful, healthy dose of humble pie that you just served me. If I'm ever on some kind of ish where like, I'm feeling good about myself, this is a good reminder that I hate bleep. I'm not even on the website, so... This is the best. Jerry, this is the best. This is the best news I've heard all day. Actually, this is the best news I've heard this month. Is okay, this. That's, that's what I'm here for. You recently interviewed Drake, the Six God, Aubrey himself. And the Air Canada Center is like three blocks away from Pick 6. Have you charted the path yet? Like, do you know how many steps it would take from your courtside seats to right here? Get out of the arena is a solid 250. 300 at least. He has a line where he says, I swear sports and music are so synonymous because we want to be them and they want to be us. They want to be us. I'm wondering if you ever had a rap song. Yeah, this, I'm not proud of it. They were just appalling. When I was in my first or second year at school, this guy paid my friend and I, I think 150 bucks to re-record a song. But then we went to like a couple of bars like around southwestern Ontario and we performed it as though we were the guy. We were totally, we were like Millie Vanilli, like stealing someone else's work for like a hundred bucks a show. Every new year, like the Madden game would come out. I would spend on the Madden game. And I think my roommate, he would buy Grand Theft Autos. That's pretty wild. And then that guy who was writing your songs ended up turning out to be Drake, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I can only wish. I wish. I wish. Who has the biggest knob in the NHL? <laughs> How do you tape your knob? How do you wrap your knob? My knobs. My knobs are... <laughs> wow, is that a loaded question? Um, 
don't know if we've developed the trust where I can reveal such a <laughs> That might have to be on our third interview. You've given so many gifts. You've given uh, you know, a mask to Des Bryant. You've given business cards nice. to Drake. Um, you've given a helmet to J.J. Watt. Hold, please. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No. yeah. What is your favorite gift that you've given someone or, oh, or maybe wow. the one that's been most well received? Thank you, man. Wow. Um, I gave Aaron Rodgers a Jedi costume and we did this scene where I had him audition for the new James Bond movie. And action. I'm Aaron Rodgers and I'm reading for the part of Bond, James Bond. So he did an audition and then I brought this Jedi cape. He did this Jedi mind trick at the end. But then that's the cape that he's got in his avatar on Instagram. The first uh, rebooted Star Wars movie came out and then he was dating Olivia Munn at the time and she's like, oh, I'm going to see Star Wars. And he was wearing the Jedi cloak in the photo. So I was yeah. like, all right, that's- That was a great screen test. I, you felt comfortable with the dialogue. I don't know, how, how did you feel about it? I felt pretty good, but I'm, I'm more of a Jedi. This interview is over. That's that's been infiltrated into his real world. That's amazing, and and Thanks, you've done man. you've done so much over the course of your career. If you had to describe your life or career mission statement, uh, what would you say that is? Um, I say I take the pro out of professional because I'm not a reporter, not a journalist, more a donkey or a jackass than anything, uh, and I've been very fortunate that. Uh, I found I found a place in this world where I could just be a total lunatic, and then people are like, yeah, I did this guy. All right, well, thank you very much for for being on the show. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you, just from a fan perspective, and and I wish you nothing but continued success. This has been the best cabbie interview ever. Thank you, Jeremy. This is tremendous. Thanks, man. That was awesome.